Hey everybody, back with my Supernatural Season 7 wrap-up video. Let's get into it. Uh, this season was certainly interesting. Coming off of the Season 6 finale, you really didn't know what they were going to do with Castiel being God's DL. Uh, and I, I, I guess they didn't either. Because, uh, you know, he's really souped up. He's God. What are you going to do with a God character? So you, you take him out. And they did that pretty abruptly. Um, when the first episode ended and Cass is looking all sinister and being, oh, this is going to be fun. I, I think my expectations and probably some of yours were that Cass was going to be the antagonist of the season. And I honestly wish they would have done that. I, I think you could have had the Leviathan story be told through Castiel um, because of them using his vessel. But they really wanted to bring in a politician-like character in Dick Roman. And you could tell that they had a, a vision of what this season was going to be. And it was going to be what I've been saying it was the entire season that it was a commentary on humanity, on America, and they they stuck with that. And I think Dick Roman, if you're not gonna use Castiel, I think he was a, a good villain. He was slimy and uh, charismatic, which is what you gotta be as a politician. And that part worked. The, the Leviathans themselves probably were the biggest letdown of the season just because of, I guess their, their look was a little hokey and the fact that they just didn't utilize them in the, the right way. Someone on my YouTube uh, likened this season to season four of Buffy uh, where the, the overall villain really didn't work. There were some really good stand, standout episodes and it's a, an okay, good season, but it, it was coming off of a couple of really great ones. And so this season to me is like a, a rebuilding. And like I said before, I really expected that of season six. And when they kept the quality of four and five going with season six, I think my expectations were a little bit, and I'm sure you your guys is too, just coming off of four, five, six, you're like, let's just keep this boat rolling. But, I, you know, they had to recalibrate what they were doing. Um, and maybe they'll recalibrate back to where they were. Or the Leviathans are still in the picture. So if they can integrate the Leviathans further into the mythology of the show, I think the, this season will stand even stronger. But I don't know. Um, but for the most part, there there is like a little bit of like middle of the season that you know it's kind of middle of the road but the final since like once Cass came back and you're dealing with ghost bobby like all of that stuff really worked for me and at the beginning of the season even when they took Cass out the amy stuff was really good that became like a, an arky type thing and if only they had have arced out the Slice Girls plot, I think it would have been really strong. Because they, what Sam had to go through with losing Amy, Kat, uh, Dean kind of was a parallel to go through with his daughter, which is wild. But they didn't give it as much weight. So I think that whole thing would have balanced better if they would have done that. I think the Bobby arc of the season worked a lot better. Um, but even that, I wish they would have waited to bring Bobby back till season eight. Give us some time, especially having to go through his death in such a, in such, it was, God, it, Death's Door was just such a moment. And it was cool, like, trying to figure out what the whooshes were. And then when it all, like, lined up that, oh, my God, it's the flask. That all really worked. And I, was, I really liked that. I just wish they would have waited. Let me miss him for a while. And, you know, if he's in the ghost world, the time is different there. If he would have came back, it would have been, like, no time for him. So that could have still have worked. 
But, you know, I'm happy I got to see Bobby again. I just wish he, him coming back would have served a bigger purpose. I wish he could have helped more with, with Dick, especially having Dick be the one that killed him. Um, and you know, him coming back lessens a little bit of the, of what a triumph it was that Bobby got those numbers to them because he was going to be a ghost and come back anyway. So, and tell them the numbers then. So it, it could have happened anyway. So I just wish they would have waited, but they didn't. We got it all at once and we had to say goodbye to Bobby twice in one season, which was very rude of them. <laughs> I'll say. Um, but, you know, they did what they did with the cast thing. He was gone for a while, and that was a bummer. But getting him back in such a big way, and I, I know a lot of you guys knew he was coming back because of how they promoted the season, but I didn't know. And it was a great moment of the season to have him back and the way they brought him back with them needing they needed something to help Sam because he was struggling so bad the whole season. You're like, you know, he's back, you know, for a little bit. He had to deal with uh, Lucifer, but they they just made it seem like he was just dealing. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, he is so not dealing and he is dying. And what would have saved him? And it was brilliant to bring him back in that way because he is the one that caused that. He was just out of it, just fully unprepared to face the consequences of his actions. He just could not face it, but was still helping them. And in the end, like he stepped forward. He really was once again, putting his faith in the Winchesters and getting into that fight that he was swearing to himself that he wouldn't get back into because of what it led him to. I was just so proud of him in that moment. And I'm so excited for next season to see how he, cause I don't think just because he did that one thing, he's like feeling like he's forgiven for everything or even that he forgives himself. Like I think there's a lot of work to do there, but I'm excited to do that work, to see him do that work and to, witness that. I'm so excited about that. And then, you know, the whole purgatory of it all is going to be quite something. But yes, I miss Castiel, but he's back. And I, I think, I think I, I'm not binging. I wouldn't call what I'm doing a binge because I really am taking my time with each episode. Um, so it, it's kind of like in between like a watching it week to week and a binge. I also like know that there's eight more seasons. So I can deal with Castiel not being there for half a season. But at, if you were watching it at the time, it was probably a big old bummer. I mean, it was a bummer to me too, but, and you know, I really always thought he was gonna come back. And the reason I thought that is because of the man who would be king. That episode was so huge for him and really established how important his character is to the canon of this show. So I never thought that he was gone, gone. I wonder if anybody did at the time, but it was just about a matter of when. And, you know, I, I had, after a few episodes of him being gone, I was like, oh, he might be gone for a while. But he came back faster than I was expecting. So for me, it was not that bad. So as far as characters go, I thought it was a, a pretty decent season for most of our, our mains, you know? Sam was having a pretty chill one up until the fact he was very much not. Um, and he was like, it was a real struggle here there for a second. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that, he, okay, he's free from the hell torment and he's free from his own self torment because we've already established that he has forgiven himself because of the punishment that he's already faced. So I'm excited by that, but now he's by himself and that makes me a little worried, but also I'm excited for him 
because like I said, I don't know if they're going to go right back into them getting back as soon as the season starts because that tends to be how they treat any time that they're apart. But I don't know. FYI, if there's a lot of cuts in this, apologies, but I've got a little bit of a cold, so I'll have some cuts in there probably for me to cough. So <laughs> sorry. Um, but I'm really excited if we do have some time where Sam's on his own to see how good he can be when he has to be the one making decisions. Um, and, and I would be so excited if he can come up like with an amazing plan to get them out of purgatory. So I'm really excited for what Sam's arc is going to look like next season. For Dean this season, his really big focus was on his drinking and how he was coping with everything. And shockingly, it's badly. <laughs> But I don't know if that's going to continue. I don't know if they're going to take that any further. If they're going to examine it even more or have him even confront how he chooses to deal with things. Or if that's just going to be how he is. And now having him in purgatory, I don't know if the focus is going to shift on what he has to face. Um, but I, I like when they go internal with him uh, and, and look at how... His behavior is affecting, like, how, how, how he can be self-destructive, but then also cares about everyone around him so much that he, like, doesn't care about himself. And I, I'm just, I just, I just hope they keep going into that kind of examination of his character. I was really thankful for Sam and Dean's relationship this season. It's probably the strongest season for them in terms of just staying on the same page and working together and not having a lot of conflict which I solely appreciated. His relationship with Castiel is still pretty dicey. Castiel did come through for him at the moment to you know get the old one-two with Dick but they're stuck in purgatory together so what is that gonna look like? I really want them to examine why they acted the way they did in season six and how they got to that fracture point. And I, I just wonder if they're going to be down there long enough to do that or if that's something even we're going to see. But I would like to see it. But who knows? And you know, I've talked a lot this season about what was really going on here, metaphorically, what we were supposed to take away from this season. And I hope it made some people look a little bit in the mirror, you know, made me examine myself and see how I, how my behaviors match what they were trying to show you what's wrong with humanity in America. So there's a lot to take away here. And maybe it was a little heavy handed in some places, but I appreciate what they were going for. It's also notable that this season they brought in some really fun characters, notably Garth and Charlie, who were fantastic. And I hope that they bring back at some point. Please, please, please bring back. But, you know, you can't say season seven didn't give you anything because they were great. And, you know, even if the plot wasn't as great as the show's plot has been in previous seasons, you're still going to have Dean and Sam in a car hunting. Like, that's a good time. So I don't dislike this season at all. It's just not as up there as the other ones. So I'm fine with it. And it led into a really interesting premise for season eight. So job accomplished in my eyes. Okay, now let's talk about the top five episodes of this season. In some ways, this was really, really easy. And in some ways, this was super hard because it was very easy to pick five episodes out of the group. I think there are five head and shoulder episodes from this season. However, ranking them, impossible. Like, I almost say all five of these episodes are like 1A, B, C, D, E. Like, I, I, you, I could really interchange all of these. Um, so, here we go. I don't feel good about this ranking at all. Just know that these are definitely my top five. There's, there's, there's no, like, honorable mention here. Number five, I'm gonna go with the finale. Like I said, I really like that episode. So it shows just how closely I rank all five of these episodes. But, you know, really well paced. Uh, gave me everything I wanted. 
I'm really happy that Dean is the one that killed Dick. So satisfying. So happy to see that motherfucker die. Having to say goodbye to Bobby, but it wasn't in a, he was able to stop himself from going vengeful. He really got to say goodbye. He got to tell them, when this happens to you, don't do what I did. So there's a lesson there. Cass coming through in the end. Crowley actually came through. He got all that he wanted though, but at least we were able to defeat Dick because of him. So I'll take that. Meg with her amazing moment with the car. Sam being the one that helped Bobby stop himself. It was just a really solid, solid episode, a solid finale, and I, I really liked everything about it. Number four, I'm gonna go with the Born Again Identity. Pretty obvious, Cass coming back was an incredible, incredible moment. The way they brought him back was so cool. It fit so well narratively in what they were needing in that moment and what it represented for him to be the one that came through and saved Sam in that way. We had Sam coming through and helping that girl, even though he was just going through it because Lucifer wouldn't shut the fuck up. But he was still, he would go to the ends of the earth to help someone and he would do whatever he could in any way he could and he did. And then Dean dealing with Castiel being back and being so mad at him, but still trying to convince that him to help and giving him his jacket and Meg stepping in and helping and what she became leading into the finale. And that just, it was just a really good episode. I appreciate the hell out of it. Number three, I'm going to go with Meet the Boss. Really, really good season premiere. I had no idea that's what they were going to do with God's DL. And he, was, he, he said, go big or go home. <laughs> he, he was taking out everybody. Those souls in him was really gassing him up and just turned him into a monster <laughs> with those monster souls inside of him. <laughs> they brought death in. That was so fucking cool. It really was just a continuation of the season six finale, which I really loved. And... It, it was such a, a fascinating look at what a godlike creature would be. Not good, as it turns out. Number two, I'm going to go with the girl with the Dungeons and Dragons tattoo. Like, come on, Charlie was incredible. What a character introduction. I can't think of a more iconic way to meet somebody and just have them become integral to the story. And just everything she did for them was everything that they needed her to be. It was beautiful. Seeing Dick Roman finally take an L was amazing. Having Bobby get to be have a little bit of a confrontation with him. It was just such a, a well done episode. They went like all espionage with it and Dean having to flirt with the security guard. It was just a ton of fun. And number one is Death's Door. For as sad as it made me, it was a beautifully done episode. Having to go through Bobby's mind into his worst places, the worst things he's ever been through, just to get the boys those, that number. And have Rufus there with him the whole time. How it ended with him in that moment with the boys. The boys just not knowing what to do with him in the hospital, trying to have to face reality. It was just, Ooh, like, I hated losing Bobby, but man, a hell of an episode. Okay, let's get into some questions. Uh, first up, Lewis asked, uh, one of the reasons that uh, he believes season seven was so hyped was because God Steel at the end of season six. Um, so he wonders if I would have liked to see that storyline or like, you know, keep the Leviathans as the big bad. And like I said, I just don't think they knew what to do with God Steel. And maybe it's impossible to deal with a godlike character like that, especially when he was going so ram like rampaging about everything. So I'm fine if they couldn't keep that going, but it would have been cool if they would have had the leader of the Leviathans be using Cass's vessel. I think it would have made the storyline a little bit more personal because it would have been somebody whose face we know and love and it would have been a little bit more of a, a conflict in that way, but they really wanted to go the politician route. 
There's a very direct parallel there to um, American politics. So they just did not have that in the cards, but that's what I would have preferred. Okay, next up is Hasna. Um, she asked, what was my favorite and least favorite things about season seven and where does it lie in my order for seasons best to worst? Okay, my favorite thing would have to be Charlie. She was incredible an incredible introduction to a character. I mean, tied with Castiel coming back, but those are two really strong moments of the seasons that I love. Uh, my least favorite thing would ha be having to lose Bobby twice in one season. That was just really tough. I really wish they would have held back on the ghost thing for a year, but whatever. As far as my order goes, I am not going to put this season last. Um, I've been trying to really think on this and how I view all the seasons because sometimes I've been copping out and saying, well, I can't really rank season three and I tie season four and five, but I'm going to make myself do an official order. So as of now, on one run through, I've only seen the show one time through up until this point. So I'm going to go one, which side note one will not stay as my least favorite because i know as soon as i rewatch it i'm gonna be like these little babies i love them the nostalgia is gonna take over and this season will rise in my rankings but for now i'm gonna say one three seven two six five four what do y'all think about that is it controversial? Does it align with y'all's at all? What do you think? Uh, I definitely think mine will change as I rewatch the show over the years. But as of now, that's where I'm at. Uh, she also asked, do I want Dean and Cass to be back on Earth first episode or do I want them to stay in purgatory for a bit? And why do you think Cass disappeared at the end? I want them to stay in purgatory for a little bit. I want there to be actual storyline for how Sam can get them out. And I want it to be Sam that does that. And I also want them, while they're down there, to maybe deal with some of their shit. But also, I don't know how much in dire danger they're going to be in all the time. If there's monsters all over the place. I don't even know if that's a possibility. But that's what I would hope for. I don't know why Cass disappeared. But he's weird, you know? Like, right now, he's still kind of weird. <laughs> so, who knows why he does anything. But maybe he can... I wouldn't think he'd be able to leave, but maybe he's like scoping out the area. I don't know. And lastly, she asked, what do I think Sam will do now that he's all left alone? I, I think positive things will come out of Sam being left to his own devices. I think it's going to show his ingenuity and what he can do. So I really hope he has like a really cool moment where he saves them. Oh, wait, wait, I skipped something. Uh, she also asked, we were introduced to three new characters this season, Gar, Charlie, and Kevin. Uh, rate them from fave to least fave. Oh, well, I hate to saying a least fave. I, we don't know enough about Kevin. He's just been really scared, you know, and he's a really good student. And that's really all I've gotten from him. So I would put him last for now. But if we have more with him, maybe that'll change. But so Kevin, and then I would say Garth, he's just a good time. He's super sweet. And he's just funny. And then Charlie, she I mean, I had stars in my eyes, my heart eyes. Like, I fucking loved her. So that's easy for me. All right, next up, uh, questions from my uh, YouTube. Shield Vids asked, now that Sam is all alone and has lost Dean, Bobby, and Cass, how do you think he should cope with all these losses? I get that he's alone, but also Sam is amazing. And I, I, I think he's going to handle it well. I think he's going to be, I don't think he's going to feel helpless in the way he felt when Dean was in hell. I think he's going to feel like he can get them out. And I just really want to see him be competent and assured in himself and be a fucking hero and like save the day. That's really what I'm hoping for. Okay, next up is Michaela. They asked, uh, we saw many versions of Cass already. Cass on God's mission in season four, rebelling Cass in season five, God Cass adorable cast now which version was my favorite and what did i appreciate of the other versions uh that's a good question i'll take any cast honestly i would say season five i love a rebellious character and uh how much he believed in the boys and it was just a beautiful thing and 
can I like caveat and say like Cass in the end was amazing. <laughs> I might take that cast every once in a while. Um, but every cast gave you something. God's DL cast was probably the most, oh God, I don't know much good about him other than Misha's performance. Um, but I really liked season four cast. I loved his struggle and his like learning of the Winchesters and like coming over to their side of things. Season six cast was so cagey. Didn't really know what he was up to. And the struggle that you saw in The Man Who Would Be King, that was really awesome. And then the cast that we've been having here recently is just <laughs> a mess. But he's so sweet. And, like, you just want to, like, say everything's going to be okay. But also be like, you've got to deal with the shit you did. So I'll take them all. I really, <laughs> I love cast. Next up is Melissa asked, or said uh, season seven had some really emotional moments. Nothing hit harder than the death of Bobby. How do I think his shocking and unexpected passing will affect the show moving forward? And do I think it was a wise decision of the writers or was it done for shock value? I don't think it was done for shock value. Uh, uh, having a, a parental figure die is a pretty common trope of shows to have protagonist characters have to be on their own for the first time and it's kind of like a, a, a rite of passage they see for them and it could have even had a lot to do with Jim Beaver's availability. I know he had a lot of personal stuff going on so I, I think it was a, an okay decision even though I don't think at season seven they knew there were going to be 15 seasons so yes in hindsight I wish they would have waited till like season 12 or something but they did it in a in a good or they they did it in a respectful way. It really gave weight to his importance with Death's Door. They really gave him a really good tribute. And while I've said I wish they would have waited to bring him back as a ghost, having him around for the rest of the season was something I was appreciative of. So I don't mind that they did it. It just really fucking sucked. And I know why they did it. I've talked about that. But it just sucked and I hated it. Um, but, but going forward, I mean, they're on their own in terms of who they turn to. So I wonder if they're going to have some other kind of character step in. Is it going to be someone like Jody? That's someone that they can go to when something's over their head. So that's going to be something that I'll look out for in the future. Next up, Ossie of Still asks, how do I feel about James Patrick Stewart's portrayal of Dick Roman? I thought he was perfect casting. I did too. I thought he was great. He really carried himself like a politician and that's what the Dick Roman character was. So in terms of that, I had no problem with his character. It was more the overall Leviathans as a whole. But no, he played smarmy so well and the just, like, he had the most punchable face. He just really wanted to go in there. So yeah, I thought he did an excellent job. Uh, next up, Rose asked, uh, what Sam's plot arc is my favorite and least favorite, season one to seven? Hmm. That's hard, too. There's, what, special children, Sam, of season two, savior arc of season three, demon blood junkie of season four, redemption arc season five, solo Sam arc six, or mentally broken Sam of seven. I mean, there's, uh, there's something to like about all of it. I really like special 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 child Sam like I really wish more would have come out of that I mean it it went somewhere it definitely was a, a huge thing but the powers come on um but I out of all of them I would pick his redemption it was so triumphant to see him deal with the things that he did and come out like the champion and hero he is it was such a journey and I always appreciate a, a character's journey. At least favorite, I mean, I didn't like experiencing Sola Sam, but it was very entertaining and he did a really good job with it. But I guess m mentally broken Sam, just cause it was so hard to see him like that. I just wanted him to feel better, especially having to, having just gone through Sola Sam. I wanted him to have a break and he did seemingly, but not really, he was just, dealing with everything in his head. So yeah. Uh, and lastly, Chatter asked that I think it was the worst season. I didn't. 
I didn't. <laughs> there was enough there for me to like. Um, so, yeah. I do not see your season seven hate. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do what I did uh, last review and watch my predictions from last season and see how badly I did. So, here we go. First up, I'm going to say Sam is going to have a more chill season. That sounds weird because he just got his like full soul back and everything. But I think once that settles down, I think he's going to not be dealing with everything all the time for the first time in a long time. Okay, so kind of in terms of what we got to see, he had a lot of chill time, but he was really just internalizing everything. So half right, maybe he really was not doing good and having a chill season. But for the most part, I think I want to give myself a little bit of credit because of the revelation that we got that he actually has forgiven himself for what he did because of everything he's gone through. So in that regard, he is doing a lot better. I'm also going to predict that Dean is not going to forgive Castiel anytime soon. Like, I think Sam is going to come around on... That's a banger. I killed that Castiel one. Castiel faster than Dean. Because I think Dean is truly betrayed and heartbroken. So yeah. I feel like once they do, like, fix it... Because Castiel can't be the bad guy, bad guy. <laughs> once they fix what's going on with Castiel, I think Dean is going to have a harder time dealing with it than Sam. Um, I was dead on with this. Uh, you know, he wasn't around enough for them to have a, a really big, I think that's still to come in season eight to really get into like what happened. But Dean was way, way more mad than Sam. Sam was just thankful that Cassio came back and took his stuff for him. So you know what? I, I banged on that one. My next prediction is I think I think Dean and Sam are going to find a way to get the souls out of Castillo because I think until they do that, he's going to be this god dick, basically. So I think they, they can do it. I think they're the, going to be the ones that do it because I think they're going to be he's going to be like their number one to, you know, stop. Truly, I think that's how it's gonna go. For so, an episode. I feel like they're gonna get the souls out of him. No, <laughs> they had to get out. Cassiel had no choice because they were killing him. So, not at all. I didn't get that one right. No. And my final prediction is I think there is going to be more with Crowley and the Lucifer Loyalist next mm. season. I think that is something that he was really worried about, and that's why he was wanting half of those souls. So I feel like he... I'm going to predict that he is not the king of hell by the end of next season. I think he's going to get usurped by someone. Okay, no. <laughs> not really. Um, I thought Meg was really kind of a Lucifer loyalist, but she was really just down for a cause, any cause, and that just happened to be one that wasn't with Crowley. So I don't think I can get credit for that. And he is definitely still the king of hell and in better shape than he was probably at the end of this season. So yeah, big fat no on that one. <laughs> so let's get into my predictions for season eight. I'm going to predict, but it's just really because I want it. I, I, I'm going to predict that Dean and Cass stay in purgatory for at least three episodes. I'm just going to say, you know, they're not going to fix it in the first episode. Just really because that's what I want. So that's number one. Number two, I think that Sam is going to be the one that gets them out. And I think he is going to get Meg back. And she's going to help. Because I think she's like fully on our team now. So if she is on our team, that means we have to go help her. Because Crowley has, has her. So Sam and Meg are the ones that are going to get them out of purgatory. Number three, I am going to predict that in some way, Bobby is going to have some kind of contact with the boys in the way that Ellen did that one time in the season at some time. Because I also really want that. Please, 
just a little like, hey, I'm still watching out for you. Just, you know, just something like that. Just some kind of reference to Bobby still, his presence still being there in some kind of way. And number four, I'm going to predict that Charlie comes back this season in some kind of way. Uh, hopefully it's for like a arc and not just a one-off like last season, but I just really want to see her again. So I'm putting it out there. I really, really, really hope Charlie comes back. So, all right. I'm so ready to get into season eight. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Season seven was a journey and I'm glad y'all stuck with me, even though a lot of you guys didn't like it, but you know, I'm, you know, hearing a little bit of good things about season eight. So I, I don't know what to expect really with the, the purgatory plot line. It really could go anywhere. So I just, I really can't wait to get into it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll be back soon.